to see everybody here today. So we're going to, I'm going to finish up. Well, I don't know if I'll get to finish it, but I'm going to finish up the message that I began um, before. Uh, we're going to talk about praying like Jesus, and I'm going to try to finish that message up today. Um, but before that, let me just share this with you. So the other day, Gloria told me that by law, you must turn your headlights on when it's raining in Sweden. And I said, how am I supposed to know when it's raining in Sweden? Let's pray. (laughs) Father, I thank you for your word. I ask that you would bless us, pour out your spirit upon us. Help us today as we talk about praying like, um, like Jesus, that you would help us to learn something from this message today. Anoint me to say what I need to say. Anoint our, my lips to say what I need to say. Anoint our ears that we would hear what we need to hear from you this morning. We thank you for your word that is going to be given today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So a couple of weeks ago, I brought the first part of this message about prayer. And what I wanted to do is talk to you about praying like Jesus. And let me, let me just give you the list of things that we already talked about in this message uh, about how to pray like Jesus. So number one, prayer always begins with God, okay? God is the one who made prayer. It always begins with God. Number two, we pray to God as a father, okay? He is our father. And we talked about that word Abbas, where we, it actually is calling God our, our daddy. It's a familiar term. Can I, can I just say this? this is a little bit off subject for it, but, but here's the fact of the matter is that we should have such an, a relationship with God that we, that we get special, we're special with him. It's a special relationship. You know, you can't just call anybody dad or anybody daddy or even everybody father. There are just certain people in your life. There's only one person you probably call father in your life for the most part. And, and, and so that's the relationship we have with God. It's, we pray to God as our father. Number two, when you pray, you will never tell God something he doesn't already know. Okay? Num- number four, sometimes prayer moves the hand of God. I'm going to tell you this. God will answer your prayer. Sometimes it's yes. Sometimes it's no. And what else is the other one? Sometimes We have to wait, right? Hold on. Just wait a little longer. Okay. Uh, Prayer is to the Father through the Son. Okay? And we pray by the Spirit. Okay? You know, the Bible says sometimes you don't know what to pray, and the Holy Spirit will come and help you pray when you don't know how to to pray. Okay? uh, Then the Holy Spirit is is who teaches us to pray. We've been taught to pray by the Holy Spirit. And then the last thing I ended up with, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-talk to you today about, is that Jesus himself needed to pray. Okay? So I want to start with that thought. Jesus needed to pray. I want to say this. If Jesus needed to pray, then we need to pray. Is that right? If Jesus had to pray, then who are we to think we don't have to pray? And, and as I look on teaching of Jesus' prayer and his example of prayer, what you will see is that there isn't any one chapter where Jesus does a teaching on prayer. There is a place where he teaches the disciples a specific prayer, but there isn't a chapter where Jesus gives a teaching on prayer. You know why? Because His teaching on prayer was woven through his entire life. All his teaching touches on prayer. He was constantly teaching on prayer. And you know what else? He was constantly praying. He was weaving prayer in and out of his life, throughout his whole life. And that's how prayer is supposed to be. We are supposed to be people who pray. Remember, there's a scripture in the Bible, by the way. It says in the New Testament, we're told to what? Pray without prayer ceasing. In other words, don't stop praying. Keep, keep praying. Okay. And and what, what this doesn't mean is like some religions where you want to be so holy that, you know, you put on your Jedi robe and you go find a high mountain and you build a hut and you sit in the lotus position and, and you drink decaf coffee and say, "Mm, that's not, 
That, you don't have to worry about that in prayer. What prayer is, is that we are familiar enough with God that we can always be in touch with him, that we're always aware of him. It's, it's not like that whole thing where we have to go through this whole process. I remember one time in one of the churches I was at, a guy came up to me and, and asked me uh, about prayer, and he said, do you, do you kneel when you pray? Do you kneel when you pray? I go, well, sometimes I kneel down when I'm praying, but most of the time, I, I just pray. He got really mad at me because he thought that I should be kneeling every time I pray. I want you to think about this, especially at my age. Kneeling is a whole different ball game. you know what I'm saying? And, and, but, but, but listen, there are times when it is appropriate to kneel down and pray, but if you only prayed when you were able to kneel down, you probably wouldn't pray very much, right? I mean, there's only certain situations. If you're driving in your car down the road and you want to pray, you can't pull over to the side of the road and kneel down and pray. So God wants us to talk to him all the time. He wants us to be in constant contact with him. So listen, I want, I want to make this very clear to you today. There are no preconditions of anything you need to do in order to pray. My advice to you is just pray. That's what Jesus did. He just, it was just part of who he was. It's woven in your life. Prayer without ceasing. You get up in the morning, you're talking to God. You go to work, you're talking to God. You, you got decisions that you're making throughout the day, you talk to God. You're on your way home from work, you talk to God. You get home with your family and you're talking with God. Before you get, how many of you pray before you go to bed? I pray every night when I go to bed, I pray. You're just talking to God throughout the course of the day and it almost needs to be like um, breathing, okay? It just becomes very natural. Some of you are gonna go, well, I'm not very good at praying and I find it difficult. You know, if you will just do it all the time, sooner or later, it will just become a natural thing for you to do, okay? That's prayer. Here's some things Jesus taught. Let me give you quickly today some things that Jesus taught us about prayer, okay? So the first thing Jesus answered was the question of, of how should we pray, okay? And here's what Jesus said. He said you need to pray in faith. Let's go to Matthew 21 and verse 22. Whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. You say, well, what, what does that mean? So if you pray, you need to have faith, number one, that God exists. You, 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 if you're going to pray to somebody, you better make sure he exists, right? Okay. You have faith that he's, a, that he's a good God and that he loves you and that he will be a father to you, that he will provide what you're praying for. So you need to have, you need to have faith that Jesus has forgiven you so that God will hear your prayers. You need to have faith that the Holy Spirit is teaching you to pray. You need to have faith that God will hear and answer your prayers. And, and let me tell you this, God's a father, and like all fathers, he's got three ways to answer your request from his kids, yes, no, or later, okay? Now, I, I'm a dad, these, these, are the, these are the answers. Well, somebody will say to me, well, God didn't answer my prayer. Yeah, he did. He probably said no. You know, we think God hasn't answered our prayer because he said no. Or we think he totally answered it. When he says no, that's an answer, right? He totally answered your prayer. So, and sometimes when you think God hasn't answered your prayer, he says, wait, just hold on a little while and God will, and, and, and that comes through. You know, sometimes if we wait, if we're willing to wait, rather than getting a quick no, we'll get a little further down the road, yes. You know, does that make sense to you? If we're willing to wait, sometimes what would be a no immediately down the road will be a yes, okay? Jesus also told us to pray in a way that gets to the point. This is a, this is a thing of mine, okay? Because Jesus always got to the point when he prayed. Every family has that guy, you know, that religious guy. He's the designated holiday family prayer. And he, he prays forever. There's a saying, you don't have to be eternal to be divine. He prays forever. He prays so long. He's the guy that ain't Thanksgiving. You know, you're sitting there 
and you're going, well, here goes Uncle Hank, you know, and he goes on and on. I mean, remember that guy, you know, as if God was in heaven going, yeah, yeah, there is a good prayer. He's, he's taking a long, an hour to pray over his meal. That is the kind of prayer I want to listen to. You think God's up in heaven saying that? Oh, that's a good prayer. And, and, then, and then you have to, you know, that guy that prays like that, he'll use all these bizarre words like Shekinah, you know, hallelujah, amen, and all this stuff. He's like, got to make sure you use all these big spiritual words. And so he's just kind of throwing out words because he wants to make sure this prayer, you know, is impressing him. I wonder who, who really is the guy trying to impress. Is he trying to impress God or is he trying to impress us around? Can I just tell you something that when you pray, you don't need to worry about impressing me because I can't answer your prayer, right? So we don't, can we just agree we don't have to impress each other when we pray? Who do we want, who do we want to get through to? We want to get through God, okay? So we have all that. So Jesus said you don't have to pray like that. I, I think when people think, think of prayer, they think of that pious, religious kind of people who speak the dearly belovedism language kind of. You, you know, it's all religious language. Let me take you to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 7. Listen to what Jesus said. Matthew 6, 7, he said, When you pray, do not heap up empty phrases. Sound familiar? Don't heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard by their many words. Did you hear what Jesus just said? He said people think that the more words they say, the more God will listen to them. No, get to the point. You know, so Aaron... Aaron used to pray over our meals. We used to have Aaron pray over our meals. When he got old enough, we wanted to teach him how to pray over the meals. And so he used to pray over our meals. Now, in my mind, you know, Gloria every once in a while wanted to correct him, and I would make a joke about how he prayed. But in my mind, Aaron knows how to pray really good for our meals. Let, let me give you his prayer. It was really, really good, okay? You ready for this? God is great, God is good, and we thank him for our food. Amen. And we were done. We were like, it was right, it was so fast. See how, I would, I would tease him every once in a while. I go, you know what? God's up in heaven going, did, did somebody hear something for a second there? You know, and so you see how it works? That's it. I mean, truthfully, I want to make Aaron the official prayer at all of our family Thanksgiving gatherings, okay? You know, and, and so he gets to the point and you get to eat the food while it's still warm on top of that, okay? So it's okay to pray short. The Lord's Prayer. Take the time and do this sometime. The Lord's Prayer. This is the prayer where de Jesus is teaching the disciples. They come to him and say, tell us how to pray. He prays them the Lord's Prayer. 66 words. I looked it up one time on the internet, which always tells the truth. You can say 66 words in less than or around 30 to 35 seconds. The prayer that Jesus taught us to pray only takes 35 seconds to pray. Isn't that incredible? And we think we got to pray these big, long, impressive prayers. It's okay. It's okay to pray short. Can I just say this? It's okay to pray in English. I don't mean like not in tongues, because we believe in speaking in tongues, we believe in praying in the Spirit, but you don't have to use words that only, only Christians know, or you don't have to use King James words, you know, those kind of things when you pray, okay? Because God wants us, you know what God wants? He just wants to hear from us. He wants us to want to talk to Him. Somebody said, well, I don't know exactly what words. You know what? You're going to your dad. Okay, so we know how to talk. Most of us knew how to talk to our dads. You know, be respectful, speak from your heart, you know, honor him. I have a, I have a younger brother who's 20 years younger than me. I he came here one Sunday. He was with us one Sunday. My, bro my little brother is 20 years younger than me. And, and that boy could work my mom. 
So he'd be in the store. You know how they have the candy bars at the checkout thing? You know, they have the candy bars. And, and I'm standing there one day. Now, he's 20 years younger than me, so I'm already a grown adult by the time he comes along. And he's standing there, he's standing there one day, and he, he grabs this candy bar out of the thing, and he looks at my mom, and this is what he says. He goes, Mom, could you, finally po- could you possibly find it from the bottom of your heart? I mean, man, he knew how to work her, you know? And, and that's, how we approach, that's how we approach God. We're respectful, and we talk to him just like we would talk to our dad or our mom. You know, so speak intelligently. You don't have to know the Queen's English. You don't need to know the King James version of your prayer. You don't need to parse Greek verbs in the middle of your prayer. You know, you don't have to do all that. You don't need to impress the audience. Just talk to God. That's it. Jesus also said this. He said, pray God's will. Pray for God's will, okay? Listen to this. This is what Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 23. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give to you. Here's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, ask in my name. I want you to think about that, because we think that when Jesus said, ask in my name, that meant we should put Jesus' name at the end of the prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. That's not, that's good to put that in there, but that's not what he's talking about. He's saying, use my name when you pray. So in other words, if I'm going to use Jesus' name when I'm going to pray, that means I need to be praying about things Jesus would approve of. Anybody like me ever tried to pray that God would make you a millionaire? Or how about this? I, I, I prayed that God would give me a Corvette. You know? First, yeah, I got a Mustang. I mean, that's fine. A Mustang's fine. That came more from Gloria than it did from God, but... Gloria said, Gloria heard from the Lord when I prayed for the Mustang... And she said to me, you cannot have, I mean, when I prayed for the Corvette, and she said, you cannot have a Corvette because you will kill yourself. Because she, she's right, I would, because, you know, they guarantee a Corvette will go close to 200 miles an hour, and I would have to find out if that was true or not. And sometimes, so it's not a bad thing. So, not a good thing. So, we need to pray in God's, in Jesus' name means, not that you tack his name on the end of your prayer, but that you're praying for something Jesus would want you to pray for. I mean, let me use it this way. Let me take Jesus' name out of it. I'm going to use oral, for instance. If I was going to pray, if I was going to ask God for something in oral's name, he would expect me to ask God for something that he approved of for me. If I said, if I said to God, um, Oral, I'm coming to you in Oral's name, and he said to give me a Corvette. Oral's going to go, that's not, that's not what I want you to pray for. I mean, I might go to him and say, Oral wants me to pray in his name that I would get a million dollars, and Oral will go, yeah, give him a million dollars, and he, I have to give him half. But do you, see what, do you see what I'm talking about when I say pray in Jesus' name? Pray for something that, that's God's will. Okay? So, you well, you, you know, how do you know God's will is? I have that question, by the way, all the time. How do I know God's will? Number one, read the Bible. And you're going to know that, number two, God wants you to grow. And he wants me to love my enemies. You, you want me to pray for people who are, are sick and hurting? Okay, God, I'll do that. You want me to pray to have a heart for the poor? Okay, I'll do that. Okay, see, God, we know the things God wants us to pray for. You want, God, you want me to help me grow spiritually? You pray in God's will. Some of us pray against God's will. We, we say, I don't know why God doesn't answer my prayer. I'm going to tell you why God doesn't answer prayer. Because actually, James said, the reason your prayers aren't answered is because you're asking amiss. You're asking for something bad. Some of you want God to bless relationships that you shouldn't be in. Best business, businesses that are crooked and corrupt. Some of us want God to bless decisions that are not God's, they're not in God's will. We need to pray in his will. Don't do your will and then pray to God to fix it. Pray in his will, okay? Here's the other thing Jesus said about prayer. Pray humbly. Pray humbly. Jesus tells us a parable in Luke 18. 
you're going to, you know the prayer, you know the, the parable. Two guys go to the temple, they both pray, okay? First guy, super religious. Says he's a, I think it says he's a Pharisee. He's super, super religious guy. And here's what he prays. This is an awesome prayer that he prays. Okay, here's what he prays. God, I thank you that I'm not like this disgusting loser over here trying to pray. That's exactly what he said. The other guys, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're pretty bummed out at this prayer. What do you mean? And they're all like, I think he's, I think he's talking about us. You know, the other guys in the church are going, wait a minute, he's, he doesn't want to be like a loser like us. And his whole prayer, if you read his whole prayer, it's filled with, I, I'm good, I've done this, I've done that, I'm better than other people, I, I'm better than other men, I give this much money to the church, I do things. He keeps using this word, I, I am the best one around. Jesus, you know what Jesus said about his prayer? He said that guy's prayer went to the ceiling and bounced right back down. He didn't go, didn't go anywhere. Because he's praying for an audience. He wanted people to hear him. He, wanted to, he was praying for the approval of men. Oh, listen how holy he is. Look at all the good stuff he's able to list out. Jesus says the other guy comes in and here's what he prays. God, I'm a sinner. My life is a mess. I'm totally sorry. I need you to help me. He doesn't look up. He looks down. He's not proud. He's humble. He's not boasting. He's actually broken when he prays. He's not seeking anybody else's approval. And Jesus said, he's just wanting God to help him. And Jesus said, I tell you what, that's the guy who knew how to pray. He didn't use big words. He didn't pray long. He was humble. He was repentant. And he was asking for help. Religious people pray proudly. And Jesus said that the humble will be exalted and the exalted will be humbled. You want to be humble when you pray. Number, here's the next one that Jesus says. Keep praying, okay? Just keep praying. Don't just pray once and move on. You need to keep praying. So I'm going to tell you this from my own personal experience. So I had a person come to me one time in one of my churches and said, why do you... I was praying for somebody in the church who was going through a difficult time, and I probably prayed for them five, six, seven times. And then I would anoint people for prayer, and I would have some of the times the same people would come up, and they would be want to be prayed for for the same thing they came up the previous Sunday to be prayed for. And somebody came up to me and go, why do you keep praying for these people asking for the same thing? Why do you keep praying prayers for somebody and you're asking for the same thing from them. God heard you the first time. Well, I realized very quickly because there was a teaching for a while, especially on Christian TV and, and, and in, a, in a whole prosperity kind of thing, that you all, if you prayed more than once, you were showing a lack of faith. Okay? No, here's the deal. The more you pray, the more faith you're showing. As a matter of fact, you know, Jesus told a parable to the effect that we should always pray and never lose heart. Remember, he told the story of a woman who just kept going to the judge, you know, kept going to him. I need you to hear my case. You know, some of you have been praying for a long time and you know you're in God's will. I'm going to tell you today, keep, keep praying. You know who doesn't want you to keep praying? The devil wants you to stop praying. You know who's sick and tired of hearing the same prayer over and over again? The devil is tired of that. God's not tired of it. And if you come to me every Sunday for a year and we're praying for the same thing, I'm going to pray for you and we're going to keep praying for you until God answers. That's what Jesus says to do. He says, keep, keep praying, okay? And let me give you a couple of reasons to keep praying. Number one is, if you keep praying, you'll keep hoping. It, it, you keep hope alive with that. Number two, it will maintain that you are willing to learn and be teachable. If God's trying to teach you something, as soon as you stop praying about it, what you're saying is, I don't want to learn anymore. I, I don't want to grow. I don't want to change. I'm not even going to talk about it. Let's say you're frustrated with someone, okay? Okay. And as soon as you stop praying for them, you've lost hope for that person. 
You see, you need to keep praying. If there's a person in your life you need to be praying for, you need to keep praying for them because the minute you stop praying for them, you've lost hope. You've decided, I'm done. I give up. I'm not even going to give you the time to pray for your name. If you keep praying for people, it means you love them. You keep praying for the people you love. You stop praying for the people you don't love. So you need to keep praying for people, okay? If you keep praying for things in your life, in yourself, it means you're teachable. It, it means you're praying hope. It means that you're willing to conform your will to the will of God for you. So those are some of the things that he said we should pray. Now, he also talked about who we should pray for, okay? And so he said we should pray for those who've sinned against us, and we should pray to forgive them. Okay, I don't like that prayer, personally. That's a prayer I don't like to pray. Can anybody else say that might be you a little bit? You don't have to raise your hand because we don't want to know who you are because I don't, if I don't like somebody, I find it hard to pray for them. Am I the only one? But you know what Jesus said? <laughs> Those are the people you exactly need to be praying for. Listen to this, Mark 11, 25. And whenever you pr stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone so that your Father who also is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. Should you really pray to forgive people? You betcha. If, what if they don't apologize? Keep praying for them and go ahead and forgive them. What if they don't repent? Then forgive them. What if they don't want to change? Keep forgiving them. What this does not mean is that you ignore what they've done or that you're blessing what they've done. You simply don't worry about what they've done. I love everybody in this room, but I can't live your life for you. But I can live my life. And I think what God expects from me is to forgive people who have hurt me. So you don't simply forget what they've done. You just cease to worry about it. It doesn't matter that you don't call them to repent of what they've done, that you reconcile with them pretending that everything is fine when it's not. You don't do that. You keep praying for God's grace upon them, that they would come to repentance and that their heart would change. That's it. It's acknowledging I've sinned against God and he's forgiving me. You've sinned against me and I'm going to forgive you. It's doing the work of the gospel for others. You've been sinned against and so have I. Everybody in this room has. And if we, if we don't pray to forgive people, then we're the ones who are going to become bitter, hard-hearted, mean-spirited, vengeful, angry, and violent, and all of those things. It becomes very ugly for us when we don't forgive. Okay? Does that make sense to you this morning? Prayer is good. It's for the good of the person, and it's also for our own good when we pray for people. It's, it's good for everybody. And again, this doesn't mean we overlook the offense. It doesn't mean that we just simply bless what they've done. It doesn't mean that we even necessarily reconcile with that person. They need to repent. They need to apologize. They need to change before trust is rebuilt. But our forgiving them is the beginning of a potential process that may give them a chance to respond. Jesus said as well, it's good to pray for our needs. Now, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks to him, it will be open. What Jesus is saying is this, the bottom line is, ask. You don't get what you don't ask for. If you need help, then ask God. And I think some of us, we don't ask because what we want to do, we, we, want, we want to do a good job so that God will be proud of us. So God's a dad and he wants to help his kids. He's not sitting back there saying, well, if you do a good job, then I'll love you. Fathers don't say that, or they shouldn't say that. He's, he's sitting back and saying, I love you. I want to help you. Let's do this together. And some of us think something that, that sometimes don't bring little things to God. I had a lady one time, can I tell you a quick story and then I'll move on real fast because we're almost, we almost need to be done. So I had a lady one time came into our church on a Wednesday night and we were taking up prayer requests and we were praying for people. Do you want me to pray for her cocker spaniel? Her little dog was sick. Now I have to tell you, there's this conversation going on in this inside of my head. I'm, I'm not praying for a dog. 
God doesn't care about a dog. But I went through with it, and I prayed. we prayed for the dog. Now, it wasn't by my faith, because I'm like, do you, do you know that dog got healed? God healed that dog. The lady went home from church, and it was just fine. It was like, that taught me a big lesson. God cares about the little things in people in life. We think sometimes the little things don't matter. God doesn't care. Listen, it's all the little things in the faith that we have in little things that build us up so we can have faith in the big things. If God can heal a cocker spaniel, and if I can have faith that God will heal a cocker spaniel, then what can he do with somebody who has cancer? See, then I can believe that God, God will heal. So, you know, God's, you know, God's got billions of people with all kinds of needs, and he's answering the prayer, okay? And, and I would encourage you to talk to God about the little things. Whatever it is, just ask. You never know. Need a job? Ask. Um, you need to grow? Ask. If you're sick, you need to ask. Um, and God will listen, and he'll hear, and he's going to reply. Yes, no, or later, but he will, he's going to hear what, what you have to say. Jesus also said to pray against temptation, okay? Matthew 26, 41 Pray that you will not enter into temptation. That's what Jesus said. Pray that you won't enter into temptation. Oftentimes, we wait to pray until after we've sinned, and then we want to ask God for forgiveness after we've sinned, when it would have been better for us to pray before, get this, and not sin at all. It's a much better deal if God can help us get around the temptation than, than to get around that, okay? And so... It's, listen, I'm not telling you, I'm telling you if, you, if you fail God, you need to pray and ask for forgiveness. But what we need to do is we need to start praying God would keep us from, protect us in the temptation. Help us to say no when we should na- say no, okay? And so we need, to, we need to pray from what it is. Instead of reacting, we need, we need to respond to it by saying no. As opposing, we need to give in. Okay, Jesus said to pray for the workers of the church. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send leaders out into the harvest. I want to ask you, uh, you know, be in prayer, right? People who love Jesus, who love Chardon, uh, uh, they can continue to, we need to pray for people to continue to talk to other people in Chardon about God, right? Right? We need to start, how about this? As Chardon Assembly God, we should start praying for the service next week that's going to be outside because a lot of people are going to see that. And so this morning, we're going to do this. We're going to just close out with a word of prayer together. And then next Sunday, if it's okay, I want to spend most of the time of the service next Sunday praying with you and praying together. Uh, not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that. Um, we'll do the communion. That will be perfect to have communion. And we're going to spend a good amount of time in worship and prayer together, praying for those who need healing in your body and whatever needs that you have. And so we're going to do that. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for the fact that we can come to you in prayer. Lord, you know the cross.